welcome. It's hot as hell in here. And not just because I'm in it. What's up? It's Sydney, and I don't know what prompted me to film a video about Bethany Moda in my car in 80 degree heat, but here we are. Sydney sweaty car commentary. Ooh. Let's just jump into it. If you're around my age, watched YouTube in middle school, and dragged your mom to Michael's on multiple occasions to buy some random supplies for a bootleg Pinterest DIY you never used, you probably watched Mac Barbie 07, aka Bethany Moda. Miss Bethany grew up in California and was homeschooled for much of her life, so she got bored and like we all do, except not really because no one was really doing it at the time, she uploaded her very first video to YouTube in 2009. Her channel grew relatively fast. It was nothing like Emma Chamberlain where it kind of blew up overnight, but for around that time, she wasn't ever not popular. I would just say that most of her success came from the 2012 to 2015 years. She was most known for videos like DIY quick and easy back to school lunches, DIY bow back top that prompted every 12 year old to recreate and wear one summer with one of those iconic built in broad justice tank tops because fashion. What I got for Christmas, morning routine, night routine, after school routine, vacation routine. You get the idea. This is absolutely no hate to the girl, by the way. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Genuinely, she was the blueprint. We all did the same damn thing. Oh, what's that? You've never heard of a bow back top? Let me catch you up to 2013. Honestly, I just can't sit in one place for this long without physically moving around, so I'm gonna just exercise my hands. Most people when they say exercise their hand mean like, you know what I mean? But I mean, make a DIY bow back shirt. This is not gonna turn out well, but I'm just gonna let you in on a little secret. I don't care. Bethany's content really just worked at the time because she appealed to like a middle school crowd. And at this point in the early 2010s, a lot of middle schoolers were really starting to discover YouTube and watch it more frequently. Plus it's really no secret that when you're in middle school, you kind of become hyper aware of how you look and you kind of start to care about it more, unfortunately. And so a lot of people kind of resort to YouTube and search like how to cover up a pimple, DIY cute clothes that are cheap, whatever it might be, and if you search one of those things, Bethany Moda. Bethany kind of felt like the cool older sister. She wasn't too old where it would make things weird, but she was also older, so you kind of wanted to be like her, and you just assumed that everything she was doing, she just knew how to do when, frankly, she didn't. I mean, the girl literally had everyone convinced that they looked better if they put white eyeshadow in the inner corner of their eye, and that's just visibly untrue. I'm not trying to be mean when I say that because honestly, Bethany was and is super talented, but she wasn't like the best at makeup. She wasn't the Betty Crocker of DIY school lunches. Her demographic was just younger kids who looked up to her and were super impressionable and thought she was the shit because she kind of was. <sighs> We're just gonna leave that open for a second. Bethany Moda was like the nice, family-friendly version of Miranda Priestly, and we were all the desperate girls at Runway who would bring our DIY school lunches in mason jars and beg our moms to take us to the mall to go to Aeropostale to get the signature skater skirt and infinity scarf look. She really did that. And you know what? I, what was that? Okay. If we're creating a timeline of like prime beauty lifestyle gals on YouTube, she was after the Juicy Sorrow 7 era of like only makeup tutorials and fashion looks, but before the overly saturated expectations versus reality skits of Alicia Marie and My Life is Ava if that makes sense. We're supposed to take a piece of cardboard and put it into the shirt so that we can like cut it, but the recycling came yesterday, so this is all I have. Also, I don't have one of those fancy like rotating fabric cutters. I just, yeah, this is, this is a pizza cutter. I have no idea if this will work. Initial thought, no. After further consideration, also no. Back to my scissors. 
Bethany was one of the biggest to do it, and she did it all without controversy, except for that one time that Shane Dawson called her out for doing blackface because he couldn't get away with it and was salty, but looking back, I will say that her Nicki Minaj makeup tutorial was a little sus. She did purposefully pick a darker foundation to try and look closer to Nicki Minaj, and that's not really okay. I'm not trying to excuse what she did because one, it's really not my place, and two, that's obviously not good. But also, it wasn't a fair comparison by Shane considering she did one bad makeup tutorial and he literally did blackface all of the time and also played into racial stereotypes as a form of comedy in a consistent theme throughout his videos. So it wasn't okay, but again, this was an isolated incident and ultimately the video was taken down. I'm not sure when, but for all intents and purposes for this video and the point that I'm trying to make, she really didn't experience much controversy because when that video was even posted, there were really no negative comments, like it didn't really spark any controversy at the time, so ultimately it didn't really scathe her career in any way and she just kind of continued on. Most, including myself, would argue that she was practically untouchable during her reign. And she really did have a reign. By late 2013, Bethany had amassed over 4 million extremely loyal subscribers, which was a lot for the time. Just to put that into perspective, PewDiePie started 2013 with 3.5 million subscribers, similar to what Bethany ended with but he ended the year with 19 million and that made him the most popular YouTuber at the time. By the end of 2013, Bethany already had a quarter of what PewDiePie had at his end of 2013 and she was like 18. But what really solidified her place on top of like the beauty world was her collaboration with the Aeropostale. Honestly, I just feel like there isn't a good modern comparison to brands like Aeropostale and Hollister at the time. You kind of just like were either there or you weren't. I kind of wish I wasn't. Since then, Aeropostale may have filed for bankruptcy like 10 plus times, but trust me when I say that in the early 2010s, it was roaring. And for whatever reason, the shirts that just said Aeropostale on like neon yellow or orange were just everything help us. And on December 8th, 2013, Bethany released her very first clothing line with Aeropostale that would eventually grow to be the mammoth, of course. I know I said that Aeropostale was popular around then, but I would even say that right before Bethany's line, Aeropostale kind of went through like a lull in popularity just because maybe people were starting to realize that shirts that just said Aeropostale all over them were kind of tacky. But right as we started to come to our senses, Bethany dropped a line. And honestly, it just launched Aeropostale back to the top again. It was so well-timed with her peak. It was well-marketed. It was just well done for what it was and who it was trying to serve. The line wasn't a fashion breakthrough. I mean, the girl literally said the top three things in her closet were skater skirt, crop top, and combat boots. But also, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that just because what she was doing then isn't in style now takes away any of the success that the line had because genuinely, she knew what the f*** she was doing. Also, even though it wasn't a fashion breakthrough, it really was a breakthrough for YouTubers collaborating with big brands. It was kind of like the first huge collaboration that I saw and it seemed like Bethany really did have a lot of creative control and up to this point it seemed like brand collaboration sponsorships were really only like audible and some random iPhone games. However, Bethany actually secured a household name, if you will, or at least a name that was seen across thousands of store locations and malls which was pretty cool, especially for YouTube so early on. Her clothing line honestly seemed huge, but I kind of wanted to fact check that just because I obviously was such a big fan of her, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't skewed, and 
No, I was not. I couldn't find any monetary value attached to the brand, but Bethany Moda was the number one Google searched fashion designer in 2014. She held hundreds of meet and greets in which thousands of fans flocked to the stores and waited in line for hours to meet her and buy her clothes. And CNBC, as well as a couple of other news outlets, also claimed that Bethany Moda was the saving grace of the otherwise failing Aeropostel. Aeropostel see what she did there, chain. So I think it's safe to say that she indeed made bank and that it was as successful as I thought. Her success though didn't stop there. She kind of just kept snowballing into even more things and it seems like that Aeropostale opportunity just opened a ton of doors for her. Only a month after launching her very first clothing line with Aeropostale, she went on tour to hundreds of Aeropostale locations on a big tour bus that I remember she did like a tour bus tour on and I was enthralled with it. And thousands of her subscribers came to these things. Like I saw tweets from this time period where people would wait six or seven hours in line just to meet their idol and take a picture with her because that's literally all this tour was. And then seven or so months after her tour, Bethany strikes again, this time appearing on the very popular TV show Dancing with the Stars. Someone fact checked me on this, but I think she was like the first internet personality to do that. Could be wrong, but seems true. She was even a fan favorite amongst contestants. Like, she had my grandma rooting for her, and my grandma's like strict on who she wants to win Dancing with the Stars. She really only wants good dancers to win which I guess makes sense. Despite her young age, she actually made it all the way to the finals and she did get eliminated on night one, which placed her in fourth, but still pretty impressive. And again, the success just kept going. One month after her first appearance on Dancing with the Stars, she even released a single, which was a song called Need You Right Now. And I have a distinct memory of staying up until midnight so that I could download it onto my iPod. The song wasn't anything special. It kind of just reminds me of the songs that the Dance Moms girls would release when they were still on the show. But I mean, I was 14 at the time, stayed up to buy it bought it for 129 on iTunes having never listened to it or having no idea how well she could sing so it was probably relatively popular. For the longest time, Bethany was just kind of in this rat race of doing so many uploads and having so many opportunities and doing a bunch of projects until she kind of just wasn't. It seemed to me that the switch kind of happened in 2017 because although she published a book that year and still uploaded fairly consistently, there seemed to be a bit of a disconnect between Bethany and Mac Barbio 7, which felt that. I mean, I was literally Beauty Queen 18 at one point and made DIY videos and had to axe the username in hopes of getting further and further away from that type of content, so... I understand if she got tired of it. This next part is mostly speculation because honestly, Bethany hasn't talked too much about why she stepped back and why she deleted her videos. She has said a couple of things, but they were all really brief and if she said more, it's deleted. One of the only comments she has made about kind of stepping back was actually on an interview with Niga Higa for his podcast Off the Pill, where she really just said that she got burnt out. I took a pretty big break most recently, and I think it was just like, it started probably end of 2014 when I was kind of just like, I am so burnt out on this thing because I was going hard for years. I think that was definitely like the main reason why she stepped back and didn't post as frequently. I mean, she literally said it herself, but I also think that there were other reasons that kind of contributed to this. Bethany turned 22 in 2017, and although that isn't very old, it's much older than her core audiences. Old Bethany Moda viewers like me are now around the age of 21, and to put it simply, we just grew out of her content, and she did do a pretty good job of continually gaining subscribers throughout her career, 
but most of her new subscribers were still around the age of 11 to 14. So it's just a lot of younger kids watching her. Bethany was and still is a great role model for tweens because her videos are always so family friendly and upbeat, but I wouldn't put it past her if she just got sick of it and if she outgrew her own content. You have to really be in love with fashion and DIY and makeup, 5,000% in love, to continue with that same content over and over because especially the way that Bethany and a lot of people from that time period were doing it, it was childish because it was meant for younger kids. And when you grow up and your audience doesn't follow you, it's exhausting. Another reason that may have contributed to Bethany kind of stepping back is the fact that she already did it all. Like, she had perfume, a clothing line, a book, a single, was on Dancing with the Stars, went on a tour. That's a lot. I mean, the girl probably made more money in 2014 and 2015 alone than most people make in their lifetime, so she doesn't really have to keep making videos if she doesn't want to. Plus, Bethany was in that early wave of YouTubers who just grew to be super successful, but also could have never expected that when they started because YouTube just wasn't as prominent as it is now. So I think it would be fair to say that maybe she just didn't really want to be famous and in the limelight. She literally was just bored and homeschooled and made a video and it launched her into this long stardom that maybe she's just over it. I think that's a whole interesting topic just because now that we know what the outcome of YouTube can be, it can be financial prosperity and clout. Honestly, her uploading less seems like a good sign to me because she isn't trying to force herself to adapt to the new YouTube algorithm and community. She's kind of just satisfied with what she got in the past, what she's still fortunate enough to get now, and kind of just seems like she posts videos when she wants to. I guess the only really surprising part of this end journey, even though she's still uploading, but you know what I mean, is the fact that in February of this year, 2021, she chose to delete hundreds and hundreds of videos. Like, she doesn't have any videos from 2009 to 2015 that we all know she uploaded, with the exception of one, which was like her announcing that she made a song. I also think that this was especially shocking because most YouTubers, especially now, really only delete or private videos if they were involved in a scandal or if there was controversy or something they wanted to hide and Bethany just kind of yeeted them respectfully. The closest thing we have to an explanation for this is actually an interview she did with Good Morning America only six months ago. I kind of lost what the identity was for me and I got a little confused of who am I and who do I want to show to the world and at some point that got a little ruptured for me and so I felt that I personally needed time to kind of step away and grow. But I would like to say that this interview came out before she deleted a bunch of her videos so I'm thinking that we can kind of just infer the explanation of how she didn't feel like they were authentically her and kind of connect that to her deleting the videos. Like I think it would be hard to kind of move on from that past image of yourself if you have hundreds of videos dating back tons of years that anyone can look to and remember you from, so I don't blame her. Selfishly though, I wish she did keep them just because a lot of people, including myself, kind of view Bethany as like this nostalgic comfort figure and almost a reminder of like better times. That sounds so pathetic, but... I mean, look at the world around us. Like, there aren't very great times. However, I totally get it. From a rebrand and just, like, a mental health perspective, I can get why you would want to get rid of a lot of that past history, just because otherwise it might not seem like there's any way to disconnect from it. I respect her decision, and I hope that she can still have a little piece of the internet where she's still spreading light and being unproblematic, because honestly, when was the last time we were able to say that about an influencer who's been on the platform for over a decade? 
let me know. This shit is done, which means this shit is done. Ooh, wow. For those of you wondering how the shirt turned out, stop wondering. It looks like shit. Ooh. I hope you guys liked the video and that this was like a topic a lot of you guys can resonate with because if not, I guess I just talked about some random chick for 20 minutes. Give this video a thumbs up if you are a hashtag motivator or just because you like me and want me to feel validated. That would be great. Comment down below any video or topic requests you have for me. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And have a fabulous day. Make a bow back shirt. Live your best life. I don't know. Bye. I respect her decision, and I hope that she can still kind of be like an unproblematic, 